Hey, what's up, guys? The D1Baseball.com crew here are uh, getting ready for the uh, 2018 college baseball season. We've got David Seifert with us, our, our new head uh, prospect guy. He's got a nice little ballpark collection there in the background. But uh, <laughs> we had our first prospect meeting uh, last week at the ABCA uh, convention in Indianapolis. So quite a spirited meeting. I think we went, what, guys, about two or three hours. But uh, nonetheless, we came to a lot of agreements. Uh, there were a few disagreements, but... Uh, the end of the day we came up with a top 100 list and uh david first of all welcome to the team my man and uh second of all kind of give, give us your thoughts kind of give the fans uh, your thoughts on uh this uh first top 100 edition for 2018 thanks kettle uh, obviously glad to join the d1 team it was a great weekend in indy uh some you know tops right now it looks like the college pitching is is the depth of the draft high end and throughout really um i know we battled pretty much Five good college pitchers there at the top with uh, Singer, Mize, Rollison, McClanahan, and Logan Gilbert from Stetson. So, I mean, um, you know, and then Madrigal is going to fit in there somewhere. But uh, at this point, I think that's uh, what we're looking at. Yeah, you know, if you look at the kind of the number one spot in our rankings, uh, guys out there, uh, you, you obviously look at uh, Florida's Brady Singer is the number one guy in our top 100. Uh, but you know what? He wasn't the clear cut guy. We're going to talk about that now. You know, obviously myself and uh, David kind of, uh, you know, picked him to kind of be our number one guy. We had some debate about some other names out there. Old Mrs. Ryan Rollison, after a very strong summer at the Cape Cod League, uh, was a guy we discussed. Uh, Logan Gilbert at uh, Stetson uh, is another guy. And uh, obviously Casey Mize at Auburn. Uh, guys, uh, kind of going around the horn here, let's talk about that number one spot fit. Let's start with you. Uh, you were a guy that certainly uh, pitched a, a few names in that number one spot. Uh, a, kind of your thoughts on, on Singer, and, and B, if not Brady Singer, and that potentially at number one spot eventually, who would kind of be your guy? Yeah, well, first of all, I think, you know, Singer's really good. I mean, before we go any further, I think he's a worthy guy at number one. Um, there's a reason that I think a lot of people – view him as as a potential 1-1 pick it's because he's nasty you know i mean it's uh uh it's 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 a great fastball it's electric it's got life it's a tough angle he commands it really well and of course that slider uh is is a, a devastating pitch so um you know he's the real deal um now I, I do think there's some people in the industry who maybe have some questions about um, the the durability because of the the mechanics and and um, you know the medical history a little bit. Come out of high school, of course, if you recall, um, that's why he didn't sign. That's why I went to Florida. Is there were some questions about the medical, and so when you factor those things in, um, you know, I think maybe there's there's a little less certainty around the industry with him than there would otherwise be, um, and that's why I, I like a guy like like Ryan Rollison. You know, that's yep. a uh, a lefty that's you know gonna sit 91, 94. It's a great body. It's a great delivery. Uh, it's a really good put away breaking ball and feel for a change up. Um, and you know, he's, he's only got one year, um, of, of division one experience under his belt. Um, and so, you know, you're comparing him against singer who, um, yeah. has two years of experience. Rollison's an eligible sophomore. Uh, but it's, it's worth noting that as a freshman, I think Rollison's numbers were better than singers were as a freshman. And then he went to the Cape and, and was just dominant. You know, he was really, really good in the Cape league in front of a lot of, um, scouting heavyweights. And so I just think the fact that he's left-handed, he's polished, um, it's a great, you know, a great body, great delivery, all that stuff. I think Rolson's going to have a huge year, and, and I get that he needs to prove it. You know, he needs to show that he can be a Friday guy in the SEC, but but I think he will, and by the end of the year, I think he's going to be uh, the top guy in a lot of boards. David, just kind of a follow-up on that? Uh, pers personally, for uh, Rolson, yeah, I haven't seen much of him myself. I just saw him briefly in the Cape. Um, it's kind of one of those games where guys in, guys out. Yeah. So uh, I agree with Aaron, and it's a uh, – Demographically too, it's it's a it's a lower risk draft pick, a left-handed college pitcher from the SEC. Those guys usually do well when they get into pro ball and into mm -hmm. major league baseball as long as they stay healthy. Yeah, so uh, Florida guys with Brady Singer leading the way, Jackson Core, another highly ranked prospect in our college top 100. Florida comes in with four guys in our top 100. Uh, other teams with four prospects in our top 100 include Arkansas, Florida State, Kentucky. LSU and Oregon State, uh, there's kind of a recurring theme with those teams. I think you'll see next week in our top 25 rankings. Uh, but uh, let's look, kind of shift gears here. Let's talk about a, a, a Dave Seifert special here and a Jamison Hanna from Dallas Baptist. Uh, Dave, I know this is a guy that uh, we really talked a lot about uh, in, in Indianapolis. There seems to be kind of a 
kind of a split feeling on him from some scouts around the country. But this is a guy that you are dead set on um, as a top 25 prospect. What, what, what's your feeling of Jameson Hanna? Why are you so high on that guy? I have a lot of experience once in watching Dallas Baptist over the years. Last two yeah. years, I've seen him grow from a really well as a senior. He wasn't re- highly recruited. He went, he went to Dallas Baptist, grew as a freshman, grew more as a sophomore. I mean, he's a plus runner. He runs at four, 4.0, sub 4.0 every time down to first base from the left side. He can, he, he's a solid defender in the outfield. He's got a below average arm, but it's definitely playable for center field. And the thing I like most about him, though, is his hands. He has strong hands. He has quick bat. I know he struggled the first two-thirds, maybe three-quarters of the year in the Cape, but if you look at what he did the last quarter of the year in the Cape and then also what he did in the playoffs, his playoffs was phenomenal. But I don't think the the national exposure for the Cape as far as scouting directors and highly ranked cross-checkers, those guys don't really come into the Cape. They come early and they come to the All-Star game and they're done. Mm-hmm. Uh, area scouts and other guys come back for the playoffs, and that's when he really put on a show. Um, and I know some people have concern about him. He's a little stiff. I don't see the stiffness. I just think he's he's athletic. Um, there is a little stiffness, but I don't think it hinders his game. And I keep going back in my head. If I compare him to Corey Ray, first round pick out of Louisville two years ago by the Brewers, um, very similar player, very similar player. So that's why I have him. I have him stuck stuff where I have him. I realize 24th or 25th on the list. I forgot where he ended up. Um, I realize that's where 23. Thank you, Kendall. That's more of a second rounder when you're mixing all the high school guys. But uh, I yeah. think James is going to have a big year, and he's going to have a, have a lot of guys interested in, in him that maybe are not at this point right now. Yeah, and yeah. I want to jump in here, Kendall. Yeah. I, I think I think it's it's a great point. I think this is a guy that um, at the end of the day, you know, we're we're maybe a little bit higher on him than the industry as a whole. I think <clears> David. <throat> I think you think he could be a first round pick when it's all said and done. I mean, look at Corey Ray was, was a top five pick. Um, you know, Hannah, I, I like that comp, you know, and, and plus I think there's maybe a, a, a chance for Hannah to be a better center fielder than, than Ray. Um, you know, if, if, if you're looking at long-term profile, so yeah. uh, it wouldn't surprise me to see him jump up into the first round, but I, I like this group of outfielders, um, you know, between, Swaggerty at, at South Alabama and Griffin Conine, who are the top two guys on our list um, from from that outfield group. But you know, then you've got uh, uh, Steel Walker, you know, who who I'm uh, a little bit more hesitant about the profile. I feel like there's a little bit of a tweener there, but everyone knows he can really hit. You know, he's going to hit his way up into this draft pretty good. Um, and and we we kind of ran Jake McCarthy back up into that top 15 range on this college list um, as a guy that I think is a true center fielder. I mean, it's it's a plus plus runner. He is physical. It's a left-handed swing uh, with some some emerging power. And um, you know, when you look at those Virginia outfielders, um, you don't have to hit 20 home runs there. You're not going to because it's a it's a pitcher's ballpark. But uh, this is a guy that's going to have a lot of doubles. He can steal 30 bases. He can hit for average. Um, um, and if he hits 10 home runs, too, I mean, I think he's going to be a, a potential first-round pick. So um, that's kind of another one of those guys that's, a, that's maybe a little bit of a helium guy heading into the spring. I can't believe you forgot about my guy Zach Watson at LSU. He's kind, of, he's kind of my big riser. He's a guy that, uh, you know, when I saw him last year, you know, he hits with some power. He's really athletic, uh, re- you know, pretty good speed. And, uh, man, he's the complete package. And I'm a, I'm a huge, uh, a huge fan of uh, Zach Watson. And, and, you know, Tristan Pompey and, and Grayson yep. Janista also are in that group. It's a, it's a very strong group of college outfielders, which, um, you know, I feel like in a lot of years, that's a demographic <laughs> that is underrepresented in the high rounds of the draft. I mean, you, you look at college infielders um, are always in demand, but it, it seems like a lot of guys, they wind up in the outfield if they can't play the infield or a lot of the really good athletes sign out of high school. And so I feel like this is a, an uncommonly strong group of, of college outfielders. And, and, and I agree with I agree with David also about the depth of, of arms in this class. The sense that I'm getting guys talking to people around the country is that people are pretty excited about the overall talent level uh, in college baseball right now. Yeah. Go ahead, David. Um, no, go ahead. I'm sorry, Kendall. All yours. No, you know, it's interesting. We were kind of talking about Pompey. He's one of those guys. He comes in at number 26 in our rankings. But guys, I think Pompey – uh, when, when you look at his summer, we kind of t- we kind of talked about it last week in Indy, but he's a guy that didn't have a great summer. You know, a lot of, some scouts kind of talked about maybe kind of the, the attitude approach with him. And I think he's one of those guys that even though he comes in at, at 26 right now, I think he could easily see himself move up uh, with, a, with another strong spring with the uh, UK. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of burdened by the fact of what I saw in the Cape. Yeah. Um, did not see I had a bad look. He was tired. 
Um, it just wasn't a good series of games that I saw him this summer. I didn't have the uh, um, advantage of seeing him this spring when he put up just huge numbers. So if he's doing it, if he's putting up those huge numbers in the SEC again, then obviously I need to change uh, where I'm at. But yeah, he slid. I think that was probably my fault. He slid a little bit lower than maybe where he's going to end up. But hey, it's what you see. You can't you can't play for him. You just go watch him and evaluate. Yeah, a couple of arms I'm kind of intrigued to see, guys, as we get into the spring. Chris Bubich and uh, Tristan Beck at Stanford. Uh, I know uh, from looking at uh, Aaron's fall report, it looks like uh, Bubich was a little bit more consistent with his velo. He was, guys, he's one of the most bizarre pitchers I saw last year because the stuff was electric. The changeup is big time. But, you know, I would see him anywhere from like 87 to 88 one inning to bump at 93 the next. It was really hard to kind of figure out. It sounds Aaron. Like his his velocity was much more consistent during the fall. And then Tristan Beck, we were talking to Dave Esker and Tommy Nicholson and Indy last week, and it sounds like Tristan Beck was low to mid-90s and looking extremely sharp. So Stanford guys, with those that kind of that two-headed monster there, really keep an eye on them. Chris Bubich coming in at 14 in our rankings and Tristan Beck coming in at 25. Uh, guys? There's, uh, there's some good lefties here, Kendall, in this range. You know, you talked about, um, about Bubich, certainly, but, you know, Tim Kate. Connor Pilkington, Stephen Gingry, all those guys are kind of clustered together with Bubich yeah. on our list. And um, it's kind of take your pick here because they're all a little bit different. You know, I mean, Kate's the, um, you know, the, the least physical, I guess, of this group. But it's, in my opinion, it's just probably the most electric stuff of this group that, that you know, plus plus breaking ball, one of the best breaking balls in this draft. And uh, the arm is just so, so quick. You know, um, I, I think that guy is going to move fast. And then you've got Pilkington, who's more physical, um, and he'll show you, um, you know, that mid-90s fastball as well, but maybe not as much secondary stuff. Good, good feel for the changeup. Gingry, who, of course, is so polished. He's one of the safest guys in this draft, I think. Um, and he's going to, you know, pitch 89-92 and, um, w- with one of the best change-ups in the draft. So, you know, and, and Bubich also more of a change-up guy. But um, I think Bubich has maybe the better breaking ball than Gingery. So, uh, it, you know, it's kind of pick your, your – you know, pick your flavor here with these guys. They they're all lefties that are they're gonna I think move pretty quickly, but um, they're different stylistically. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I guess to finish this thing off, guys, uh, let's kind of look at maybe kind of your pick to click in that fifty to one hundred range in our rankings. Uh, you know, let's start with you, Aaron. We kind of talked about it off the off video beforehand, uh, but uh, who's kind of maybe that a guy in that fifty to one hundred range that you can kind of look at and go, you know what, I could see this guy making a big leap before uh, before we get to June. Well, you know, I think it's it's easy to look at some of these big arms in this group and say, you know, one of these guys could really click. You know, a guy like Greg Valise at Miami, who's a, a sophomore eligible yeah. that, that can show you mid to high 90s. Um, you know, Ryan Feltner at, at Ohio State. I feel like he's probably more of a, of a bullpen guy. So I don't know, you know, at the next level. So I don't know that he's um, going to make quite as big of a jump, but you never know. He could have a big year and, and, and make that kind of a move. Um, certainly Jason Billis at Coastal Carolina. You know, I mean, he looks the part, great body. Um, he was, he's consistently in the high nineties this fall. It's not like he's turning a corner with his command and pitchability. That's a guy that could be a top five pick if it clicks for him this year. I mean, he's got that kind of pedigree and that kind of arm and, and, and frame. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's wait and see on some of these big arms. Um, but there's a lot of guys who kind of fit that mold here in the second half of our top 100. Yeah. What about you, Dave, David? And I'll start, I'll start right number 50. You guys have been telling me about Hogan Harris for uh, quite a while. And he's really got my ear. A lefty that's low 90s with a breaking ball. I mean, that sounds exactly like what we were just talking about up top with Bubik and Pilkington and those guys. I'm not, I'm not saying he belongs up there, but low 90s with a breaking ball at a at a at a good baseball program, Lafayette. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing him yeah. this season and, and seeing him jump up. And then I'll go down to the bottom at 96 with Brian Hoeing. Um, when I was an area scout, he was uh, in my area. And he was first on my list the year he was a senior. I believe right after that he blew out his knee. And then I think he had Tommy John. I'm sorry, he was coming back from a knee injury. And then right after I saw him, he blew out his elbow. So he's kind of had a slow start at Louisville. But uh, that guy, he looks the party, throws the party, has the pitches. It's just a matter, I think, just getting him his arm back in shape and, and yeah. rising. There. But I'm a real big Brian Hoeing fan. Yeah, two, two guys for me, guys, uh, two guys in the 60s. I'm really intrigued to kind of see how they do this season. Bryce Montes de Yoka of Missouri is 63. Uh, I feel like we've been waiting for this guy to become that dude uh, for a couple of years now. Obviously, he has big time velo, can get in triple digits. You know, can his secondary stuff improve? I think the other guy for me I'm really excited to see is Zach Hockey at the Kentucky. We talked a lot about him last week in Indy, and there is a lot of buzz about this guy. Uh, but for now, 
he's kind of considered a, a power arm that the, the, the scouts kind of want to see a little bit more. So, you know, could Zach Hockey kind of, kind of, you know, go up, you know, go up 20 or 30 spots potentially with a big spring. He's a guy that's kind of a wild card uh, for a lot of people. But for me, uh, a guy I'm really intrigued to kind of see how he does a spring. And, and honestly, it's important for his team that he has a big spring. It's Chase Sugar in Texas. He comes in at 89 in our rankings. Uh, I know the Longhorn coaches are extremely excited about his potential. Obviously, he has a big arm. Command fellas has been an issue in the past, but uh, he was on uh, during the fall, uh, was electric, uh, showed two or three pitches for strikes. If he can harness secondary stuff and if he can command his fastball, uh, th- that guy could uh, could definitely go much higher you know, than 89 on our list, uh, let's say at the midseason mark. Yeah, yeah, I agree, Kendall. I saw him last spring for the Longhorns, and he was electric that night. I think he went to – two and a third, or he came in a relief, relief and just shoved for two or three innings. And then I got a chance to see him start in the Cape, which I don't think that's his ultimate role. Um, I think he struggled with his command through three or four innings, was pulled on a pitch count. Um, so I've kind of seen both sides of him. But uh, I agree, Shu got an interesting, interesting guy as well. And Aaron, you were kind of saying something? Yeah, you know, it's just one of those guys that um, as, as – advanced analytics um, and track man and that kind of stuff takes more and more of a role um, in scouting. Uh, you know, the analytics, the, the track man stuff, they, they love sugar, you know, as far as the spin rate, um, the extension for a little guy. I mean, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, he can really spin that breaking ball, man. And, you know, I know he's not a real big guy, physical guy, but he's he's pretty strong, you know, even though he's not tall. So, yeah, I agree. That's a, that's an intriguing guy that I could see uh, jumping up here. You know, I, I just think the arms in general, those are the ones that I think tend to be more volatile because yeah. um, there's sure. a lot of guys with arm strength and it's just a matter of performing um, and, you know, showing command in addition to arm strength. And so the guys that, that do that, that take a step forward um, with their pitch ability in the spring uh, are the guys that I think could jump up here. And there's a lot of these like hockey is a good example. I mean, yeah. it would, I would not be surprised if Zach hockey pitches his way into the first round, but he needs to do it. And so, uh, um, you know, there's a little bit of a wait and see approach with him in our rankings. But um, I think the upside is very exciting. Outstanding. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, that is all the time we have. We've got to kind of uh, t- turn things over to a chat here shortly. But uh, Aaron, David, awesome stuff, fellas. And uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Okay. Thanks, Kendall.